here's my third video showing evidence of the police harassment and everything else now we're gonna go looking at snitches now this isn't all inclusive there's a lot more on here uh, coming from different sources that all tie into this but here we're gonna look at my uh, ex girlfriend ex fiance uh, what do you want to call her Amanda and this is when her and her uh, at the time boyfriend DJ Lily uh, tried to uh, set me up with this fat drug dealer named Jerome. I care less about Jerome and what he does, uh, who he does it to, or, or anything else, except for the fact that, well, he tried to set me up with the cops. Uh, it, anyway, I, I was walking down the street, he decided to holler at me, then he starts calling Amanda and DJ and trying to get a bunch of bullshit going so that DJ could come out there to fight me. That was a setup. Yeah, I knew it was a setup. Uh, you don't, you know, trying to be impartial and not pick sides, start calling up people and trying to get fights started. And why would you try to get a fight started when in front of your house when you're a drug dealer unless you were doing it for some other reason like, oh, I don't know, set someone up with the cops? Anyway, this was a text that uh, Amanda sent me. And... Uh, it's not the whole thing. We had a complete argument over text. But uh, she tells me I was told to stay at Jerome's house. Then she calls me a pussy-ass fag. Uh, oh, yeah, we were talking about the fact she couldn't pay her bills. Um, so, uh, basically, I told her, you're full of shit, which I did right there. See it on the screen. And uh, I said, I know a setup, you dumb bitch. Jerome will flip on me as soon as the popo gets called. I ain't playing punk ass games uh, with you. If DJ wants me, he knows where I live. Now, by me doing this, I can't claim the castle law in self defense or anything like that. If he came into my house at the time, uh, or my apartment at the time, uh, we got into a fight, we'd have both gone to jail. So I gave up my any sort of defense to let him come there and start some shit if he wanted to. Um, and the castle law wouldn't have protected him or protected me when I beat the living crap out of him. Uh, her response to uh, what I said was, uh, and you want him, you know where he lives. But Jerome knew what was going on. That's why he let us know what's up. Really. He knows what's going on. So he knows that DJ is Mary Jennings' daughter's stepson and that he has family who are cops that cover up for his criminal activity and that he's an informant yeah it works really well anyway uh, you can read the rest of what I wrote it was all me shit talking just to piss her off it's really funny because all you gotta do is call her weak and she gets all pissy and irritant and crybaby and tries to act hard and tough and she's really not a hard person and she wants to be a criminal so bad it's just ridiculous because that's not who she is and I'm gonna show those videos after this then we're gonna cut back to show some more uh, little uh, or not videos but I'm gonna show the pictures and I'll cut back to more screenshots and images Okay, now that was the first ambush, and you see the, the little still shots where she basically admits to trying to set me up. Um, and that's rather circumstantial, and seeing as we're exes and everything else, that, you know, could be put off on that, but no, it gets better. Um, and I had uh, actually had the paperwork typed up and sent to uh, Lieutenant Deeds, mentioning all these snitches and informants that I knew were tied into this. And lo and behold, who comes in and gets involved? None other than DJ's brother, Nathan, uh, going through another informant, Tammy Violet's daughter, uh, Rachel Farmer, who, uh, you know, and does so pretending to be his sister, Jessica, uh, which is really freaking hilarious in and of itself. I don't know if the words will come up or big enough for you to be able to read them all, but it's okay uh, you could still look at it and see what I'm talking about and then when we get to that whole affair uh, 
you know, Jessica's telling me that she was talking to Rachel, and Rachel said she's going to give me back the $200 and weed that I fronted her. And, you know, this was back when I was a drug dealer trying to wine and dine these people to get close to them to get information off of them. Uh, and what's really uh, hilarious about this is there's a whole thing in here about me mentioning, you know, if she's really there and she's really wanting to be friends with me and all this other stuff, then she needs to contact me. Uh, and after I point all this out, at first I was just like, yeah, I might show up, blah, blah, blah. Because they're trying to get me to come to Rachel's house to, so DJ could, uh, or Nathan could jump me. Most likely he'd do it with Brian and DJ. Uh, so I mentioned all this. And I even mentioned that, you know, uh, uh, thanks for admitting that I fronted $200 in weed because that was money that she could have paid me. And, and running her, you know, out to her grandmother's to work out there uh, as an in-home care provider. Uh, Jessica ended. I ended up wasting like two hundred dollars in gas. Uh, so I actually went in the hole selling drugs to try to get in with these people, which is fine with me because I'm not a drug dealer, so I don't really care. Um, you know, Jessica says okay after I tell her to have uh, uh, or I'm sorry, Rachel t says okay after I tell her to have Jessica in contact with me. Otherwise, I think it's a setup. And, uh, and then I posted this video. I, I like the song from Simple Plan. It's called uh, Last One Standing. And uh, here underneath it, you can see where Nathan Lilly uh, got on there talking shit, saying I was the only one who was hiding and all this other stuff. I guess because he couldn't ambush me. So here you have the second part where they, again, try to uh, uh, lure me out to ambush me and attack me and everything. And... Uh, there's a little bit more of me talking shit back trying to draw him out, but that never happened. Um, an associate of mine threw the uh, Black Dragon asked what was going on, and I left a very large description on that. Uh, but what gets funny about it is that when we go to uh, Nathan's page, bear in mind, uh, Nathan is his middle name. His real name is John Nathan Lilly. So his Facebook is under John Lilly. Uh, you get over here and you see him, his brother, uh, my ex, uh, their sister, and this other big guy, I don't know who he is, in the background, I guess it's like, you know, trying to show me that they're all together and, you know, they're, you know, whatever. Uh, but when you look down here, you can uh, scroll down, you can see um, where Mary's name is here, that would be his uh, girlfriend, second from the top, uh, going down his list of friends. And... Uh, I go down a little bit further, and the the images overlap. You can look at the uh, um, web address to see that it's still the same thing, uh, and most of the pictures line up. When you go down a little bit further, uh, below that picture where you would see uh, Nathan and everyone together, uh, you see Dam uh, Dam J Lily, which is DJ Lily, and then when we go to uh, there's an actual regular screenshot of it. You go down here to family, and you come across Michelle Jennings, first person mentioned in family. This is on Nathan's page. Now, when you go to uh, Michelle Jennings' page and start, uh, and you can see, you know, her name clear as day on here, her face and everything else. You know, this is Magistrate Mary Jennings' uh, daughter. And bear in mind that Lou, uh, uh, I met Jessica the same time I met uh, Leah Kirk and Ashley Redden. So their families are all tied together. And as you go down from Jessica Lee's page, here you see Mary again. She's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth one down. And, uh, you know, you can uh, keep going on down to where it shows family. And right there's Damn J. Lilly. And then right there again is John Lilly right underneath him. Down there is part of, you know, Michelle Jennings' family. And since she's related to Magistrate Mary Jennings, you can basically see where the whole setup from Jerome came from. You know, I go down there, fight uh, DJ. I'm probably going to get jumped by more than one person. And then, you know, they're going to be telling the cops that I started shit. And I told Jerome to call DJ talking shit and everything else. Eh. That's stupid childish bullshit. That's your bunch of pussies who have to hide behind uh, the cops and everything while they're pretending to be thugs. 
I mean, anyone associated with them is a fucking idiot because they're blatantly snitches, blatantly informants. Um, and now I'm going to keep going down a little bit further. Well, actually, I'm going to cut back to where uh, that the rest of that text between me and uh, Amanda, where I, you know, told her, you know, wow, you just admitted he won't fight me or try without trying to set me up with uh, the popos. Uh, yeah, you know, I was like, do you realize how weak this makes you? This is me talking to Amanda. I went even back down from going up the street with me uh, at a friend Jessica's house and hid behind the kids. So Amanda over here trying to talk shit and act all hard is just them showing weakness. She actually goes and gets her other boyfriend, who from my understanding is also an informant, uh, to, to, to make threats to me over Facebook. And I, I might even include images of that up here. I, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but like I told her, you know, it shows that she's stalking me and harassing me it's just really funny you can look at this whole situation at everything going on and you can see where you have informants associated with magistrate mary jennings who again was close personal friends with uh teresa redden and bobby redden and whose daughter is married to daryl lilly uh who's close personal friends of uh Wayne Kirk and their close personal friends. In fact, it's really interesting because uh, Trooper Williams is a blood relative of uh, Deputy Jason Redden, who uh, is kin to Ashley. And so, you know, Trooper Williams' brother in law is Trooper Duckworth. So it's kind of strange because you have this whole little close knit little family, in law, cousins, eh, brother in law, everything else sitting here like covering up and taking up and protecting each other. And it gets really funny because thanks to DJ and Nathan, uh, and, and I can't put any blame on Jessica for this because she was smart enough to, to, to keep me away from this information, but they didn't do a good job. Uh, you know, they had to brag about how they have cousins who are cops that are covering up for their drug deals and, and that are basically on the take. And, uh, you know, how they can get... Uh, you know, protection and everything from the police because of Magistrate Mary Jennings and who they're associated with and who their relatives are and all this other stuff. And, and basically, they've just, they gave me all this insight to all the criminal undertakings that these people are doing. And I haven't even began to put that evidence out. I'm just putting up uh, this little bit right here. Uh, just to kind of wet the, the taste buds for everybody on YouTube and the rest of the world because you know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep putting stuff up here, and we're going to get a little bit more uh, in depth. We're going to go a little bit more and more into the criminality that's going on, the corruption, and everything else. Uh, you know what? There's a good chance they'll probably try to kill me. There's a good chance. Well, they've already tried to kill me. Uh, there's a good chance that they probably, you know, will. It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this bullshit of having to look over my shoulder and worry about somebody trying to kill me or lock me up on false pretenses or making shit up to come and arrest me over some stupid made up bullshit. So we're going to sit here and we're going to start putting out all this evidence in little small little skits, little small little situations. In fact, uh, I'm actually going to, uh, looking at the time clock up here on the, uh, the recording, I think I'm going to actually put up where uh, Amanda's uh, other little ex-boyfriend started a bunch of shit. And, from, uh, you know, this guy's got some severe issues, but we'll go into that in a few.
here's another little couple images of some stuff. Uh, DJ went to a friend of mine and said he was going to find me and kick my ass and all this other shit. So, uh, I flat out, you know, sent a text to him, man. I was like, you know, tell DJ if he wants to fight me or whatever. So, he starts with a bunch of shit. And, uh, start off with this was me. I said, dude, uh, I ain't coming to Amanda's because he told me to come to Amanda's to fight him. I'm not going to come to Amanda's. Uh, to be honest, I'd love to show up there and just kick his living ass right in the middle of the fucking living room. Just beat the living shit out of him. I don't give a fuck where I fight him. But here's the thing about it. I'm not going to fight him in front of a three-year-old little girl. You know, I, I have my thuggish tendencies. I have my violent streak in me. You know, the Army did a great job of uh, uh, trying to um, build that. And I've had a really rough childhood, a really screwed up life. So... It's there, but I'm not going to go and, and, and fight him in front of a little girl. In fact, that's why I even told him, you know, I'm behind Amanda and Raven, Amanda's little girl. It is a bitch game. I was like, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, you want to fight me? Let's keep it simple. Meet me on the bike trail or the tracks or wherever. You pick a time, and, uh, you know, it'll have to be later because I'm in Charleston. He said, ain't nobody hiding but you. I went, yeah, okay. Uh, then, uh. When and where? Cut the talk. Name a time and place. Being direct about it. And, and, you know, here he is. Uh, why? When all you're gonna do is hide behind the cops. Then uh, who's hiding behind the cops? You and Amanda tried that with Jerome. Amanda's dumbass admitted it on text, which I have saved, which we've already seen. You know, for this video. Uh, it was like so. So cut the punk ass excuses and name a time and a place. And uh, he says all you're gonna do is be a bitch and not show up. And if you do, it be with the cops. I'm not fucking stupid, Ron. Really? Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, and like I told him, you know, it, he's too much of a bitch, you know, the chicken shit to, uh, you know, come out from hiding behind Amanda, her little girl. I was like, so keep making excuses. That's what you're good at. And I just left it at that. You know, for a guy who's wanting to fight me and have me to, you know, come out and be there at Jerome's, why would he run from the fight now? When, uh, you know, and trying to tell me to come to Amanda's, even though he thinks, you know, he can holler castle law and self-defense and all this other bullshit, he's inviting me to come there to fight him. So, legally, it the castle law will not protect him uh, from me coming to Amanda's uh, to beat his ass. Uh, in fact, Amanda inviting me to come to her house to beat his ass does not protect him. Uh, even if she gets involved, it doesn't protect her. Because you cannot, you know, tell someone to come fight you and then try to claim self-defense when you're uh, provoking, you know, this person to come fight you. It just doesn't work that way. It's legally unsound. In fact, the castle specifically states that it doesn't cover in that contingency. So they would be just as responsible for uh, disturbing the peace or battery or assault or whatever as I would. We'd both go to jail together. Uh, I really don't want to go to jail. That's why I'd rather meet him out somewhere else. And I really don't want to fight in front of that little girl. Uh, after a certain point of listening to all the shit talk, I, I decided, you know, what the fuck? Why not? Let's just go ahead and have it out. And, uh, of course, he just bitched out because he's not fucking stupid. Well, what it is is he can't stack the deck in his favor. He can't, you know, set me up with Jerome and all these other people coming out there. And you got to start asking yourself, you know, uh, how are you going to try and play thug and then hide behind someone else? The fact of the matter is that type of weak woman mentality is the reason why he is a snitch, reason why he is an informer, reason why he has his uh, uh, stepmommy's mom protecting him and, and running the, his cousins who are cops and everything else to come protect him because that's the only way they can work. And in fact, it was DJ uh, and uh, John or Nathan, however you want to think of him, who... Uh, were instrumental in causing a lot of the problems and and drawing attention to me from the Beckley police and getting them to come up here, which is really interesting because uh, going from that attention that they started getting, it was their interaction with uh, 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 Officer Redden. And then after that, Stewart and Capehart took over, everything over, which is where the harassment of my students and everything else came from. You know, And again, it ties into this. And of course, you know, uh, thanks to that video um, from the uh, uh, 
well, the, the little part of the in-game video, uh, where a certain, uh, individual known as Il Felmore, um, went in and got, uh, Amy Lilly involved in the, uh, uh, whole thing, making up stuff and running to her, one of my business competitors, and she got up there bragging about how she knew all these cops, and she was good buddies with these people, and she was gonna have me arrested and harassed and everything else. Now, even though that's separate from the situation with DJ and Nathan Lilly, it's interesting that you have, uh, one of their family members who is, you know, sitting there bragging about how they have all these connections with the police force and they can have me harassed and they can have me locked up and they can do this and they can do that based off what someone on the internet tells them. Because, you know, if somebody on the internet tells you something, it must be true. Uh, in fact, we're going to look at that video too. Message. Mr. Collins, this is Amy Lilly. I am the new director of the Wildwood County Public Library. And there have been more than generous in trying to allow you to graciously cancel your class and just continue with your whatever you want to call it and you have failed to do so. I'm making this my formal notice to you that we will not let you hold your class at the library nor will you be allowed to book any future classes. Uh, um, as you may be aware, or well, maybe not, my husband is a Department of Defense employee who did spend nine months in Iraq and won a Global War on Terrorism award. And I take a very dim view of anyone who has lied about his military experience. As a sister of a Navy SEAL and a mother of a Marine, I also take a dim view. I am forwarding your information, your PowerPoint, and everything else related to it, to the Beckley Police Department, to NCIS, due to your claim to be a Marine, therefore it does fall under NCIS jurisdiction, as well as Homeland Security. I am good friends with a high-ranking captain, and I will be letting her know what is going on. So please cease and desist any further contact at the Beckley Library. Bear in mind, you're talking about families where certain members of the family are are placed themselves in positions of power and authority, uh, usually within the government, and the other members of the family run an organized criminal enterprise. And here we have someone going off something that uh, someone they don't even know, get on the internet, made up, and told them. Uh... And there, uh, what we have here is business competitors who are internet trolls who go out of the way of uh, attacking other people's businesses, feeding into the uh, uh, crooked cops and the corruption who are in, you know, because I have that public image on the internet, and who are in turn, uh, uh, the cops are trying to use that as grounds uh, to, by feeding the trolls, by bringing in false charges and everything else, because we already heard Lieutenant Deeds uh, when I mentioned, you know, that whole threat about charging with the child porn, and he's like, oh, I didn't mean it as a threat. Well, really? I file a complaint, and your whole response to the complaint and the fact that I was complaining because there was exculpatory evidence on that computer for the whole thing with Ashley harassing me, and you come back with, well, they found child porn on your computer. Really? And so I didn't write a statement March 10th? And I wasn't aware of that. Oh, wait, that's right, because you tried to conceal the evidence. And see, well, by now I should probably point this out. I let them keep going. They kept going. I recorded the information. I recorded everything that occurred. So what happens is this. There's a record. There's a paper trail. This comes out in a lot of different ways. And I've actually written, uh, I sat down when I was in jail. I had nothing better to do. Had time on my hands, so I wrote down a script outlining everything from beginning to end. This thing is 14 pages on a legal pad, front and back. And what's uh, I mean, this is over a six, almost seven year period, so you're looking at really 28 pages um, of just information. Um, because I had I wanted to write it all down because there's so much involved I didn't want it you know all of it to uh, um, 
you know, I was afraid I'd forget things. So I sat down and wrote it all down. Um, and I was thinking about, it. I've allowed these people to continue to progress, to keep going. And you heard that excuse, yeah, that old saying, you know, give someone enough rope to hang themselves. Well, I've done that. We've seen that Lieutenant Deeds threatened me with a child porn thing. Why? Because I filed complaints. Uh, we've seen that certain people happen to be informants or known as informants. All of them uh, are there in this as well. In fact, I, I'm even going to show another video on here of uh, Tammy Violet, uh, Rachel Farmer's um, mother, threatening to send gun-toting biker and, and, and her uh, boyfriend, Robert Townsend, uh where they had threatened to send gun-toting bikers to my house because her 18-year-old daughter uh, ran away with my 20-year-old cousin. And they were going to send gun-toting bikers to my house and threaten it because it was going to be messy. At the same time, you know, they had uh, uh, Richard Frank um, trying to take my picture because, you know, lemon trees have such silky smooth leaves and it looks so pretty over there by the window. And so they, you know, we're, we're trying to take my picture, I guess, to go have the Avengers to come after me or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna and we're gonna show that video on this too. I I got time. The other ones have all been about an hour. This is only about thirty minutes. Um, and we're just gonna keep examining where all these informants uh, and, and 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 drug dealers who have ties to the cops uh, keep uh, uh, coming at me and threatening me and attacking me. And uh, it, it gets very interesting. In fact, um, the only reason I didn't uh, sue the living crap out of Il Felmore uh, when he fell for that whole April Fool's Day prank of the um, uh, uh, civilian counterterrorism course to get him involved to try to interfere with my business practice uh, was because he got me something that was so much more valuable and this woman's ranting at me. And you can hear it right off the voicemail on my phone. Cop, huh? Uh, what's your name? Yeah. Fucking Maria's ex-husband come in there. He was gonna whoop Preston's ass. Preston called the bar lunch. Yeah, he was down there in fucking Maria and Preston's apartment. Alex Murray takes Tesla that was there. Oh, did you guys? Yeah, it wasn't one from Kentucky. Yeah. Oh, whichever. I don't know. I just walk in there. They're all yelling. Jack's got his shirt off. He's gonna whoop somebody's ass. Blah 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 blah. All kinds of stupid shit. See, that, that's what I'm saying. There's so many different towns going around, nobody knows what the hell's real. What did your phone do for you? Does it have a full phone for you to touch screen? I don't think I have a warrant. It's just a bad thing. It's left over when you say the other day. And I called it my phone name, social, everything, and nothing came back. Yeah, we walked in there and called That was when uh, that fucking graffiti bullshit started. Okay. Just be careful, you know, in case you do get pulled over, the cops come up there looking for him, he may not want to be there, you know what I'm saying? Well, there you go. If he does, they'll pick him up too. Well, if you do, they'll pick you up. But I'm not there, that way am I? It don't matter. Damn. It does not matter. I don't have one for me for nothing. What have I done? I don't know. Hell, that was a goddamn shooting last night in a cop in the the apartment. One cop car showed up. No, no. I don't think they was actually intending to shoot anybody. I think they were just trying to scare somebody. Don't know. They was trying to kill somebody, yeah, they felt miserably. I ain't worried about the cops going to my apartment. Well, I was just saying if they were dead, they don't want to be there. Hell, the cops have only been to my apartment one damn time, Tammy. And that was when, uh, uh, yeah, you called. 
How would that underage drinking get? Versus their underage drinking, you damn yeah. right. You, you I don't want her to go back to school, man. And I say, well, that's all the bullshit all the time. You know what? This is my kid. I know it's the best with my kid. Everybody else can fuck their lives up all day for more, but it's just for my kid. Sorry. You know what I'm talking Yeah, well. Well, I'll look at it. Fuck the other lives up. We're not going to have it. Now Mom's getting fucking charges. So he shouldn't even be sitting where he's fucking at right now either. And then that's right, baby. It don't matter. They actually won't even make it to the grand jury. So he's going to sit there until he's going yeah. to get bailed out. Yeah, or see, the grand jury convenes January. Three March. you got April. Can... No, he's got two, yeah. Three when you're out. Two yeah, yeah. Jail. Okay. So, so it's every four months. No, every three months. Every three. So he's got one coming up in January, another coming up in March. And if they don't convict him in the March, then they got to drop it. The only reason they're hollering that shit is because Perrin knows that me, Eric, Marlo, and Jack all run together. It wouldn't fucking surprise me to start seeing charges getting leveled on fucking Preston and everyone else just because that's Jack family. I don't see Preston <coughs> getting any charges. I see Jack getting charges. I don't see Preston. Preston don't even hang out with you all, so I really don't see Preston getting in any kind of trouble. Shit, Preston came up to the apartment, what was it, last night, because uh, Jack wanted to buy some more fucking weed. Well, yeah, that's just because Jack and then him and Marlo got into it because Marlo said something to him and Preston ran his fucking mouth. Marlo was like, you want to fight fucking fight you. Yeah. Well, that's between Marlo and Preston. I don't give a shit. <coughs> I was gonna send uh, Rachel a message. I thought I caught a fucking Amber again, dude. For God, Amber must be talking about me, thinking about me something. Uh, but I was gonna send uh, Rachel a message on uh, Facebook. I want to send that thing about Nashville County pop up on my uh, news feed, but I decided not to. I don't know where she at. Oh, she ain't in my apartment. Hell, instead of calling the cops and making up some goddamn bullshit like that, or sending your gun-toting biker buddies over there, just fucking call me or help me show up. I don't care. Yeah, she ain't here by Friday. Tell me. And they know that I'm going to care about the purpose, but these motherfuckers are going to watch the goddamn world. I do not care. You send gun-toting motherfuckers to my apartment, we're going to have a problem. Well, then we're going to have a problem. Go check. Okay. Talking about my dad, my baby's daddy gonna take care of that. That ain't fucking losing piece of shit. He gonna take care of a goddamn thing. All he wants is her fucking money. He ain't getting the shit. And he, and even if he, that baby is his, he has no means, source, or know-how to take care of that child. All he is, all he could have been impossible ever to find in his car with that. I don't know, I had a discussion with Jack about that. Which, he told me he swears up and down that it's his. Well, that's alright, buddy wants to be an ATAP. Yeah. He yeah. sure the fuck does. They're both fuckers. Oh, okay. So good luck to Jack on that one. And I hope he gets the goddamn heart broke. And then I'm going to hop in his goddamn face. Because this Rob sees him, you can bet, you, better, you can bet. He's getting his ass kicked. He won't have to get worried about getting his knees by the front by Rob. He won't have to worry about getting his neck broke. He wants to play be a man. He tells him to step up and be a fucking man. Don't just call yourself a man. Act like a fucking woman. Well, I'm 
I have no idea. I just know that Jack disappears for hours at a time to go to his grandma. <coughs> so follow him. Nope. I'm not in this. I really... I'm not, well, what? she was at your apartment. It was the last place she was known to be at. Okay. That's for y'all to talk to Jack. If y'all would have came to me instead of calling the cops for some bullshit, we I would have... Yeah, and so I, after you called the cops, after you hollered the cops I'm and everything else, you told me, you told me, you yeah, but you told me she was going up there with the cops before, uh, before or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Well, either way, he told me, but you already had premeditated to call the cops any damn way. All you had to do was call me, because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Said they couldn't look in the room, see if Rachel was there, and that lady came and said Rachel was in there, and then the screen popped out in the fucking window. Mm -hmm. Of course, nobody says they did that. And this mysteriously happened to you. And then Rachel's stuff that I got her for Christmas just mysteriously appears in your apartment, too. Yeah, yeah, I've already brought all of that up with Jack and everything. And I guess what? Yeah. He has no clue how he got there. <laughs> he just walked in by itself. Oh no! After uh, after a while, me haggling with him and arguing with him over it, he he finally broke down. Yeah, Rachel was here, but she's here now. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the fuck you got her at. I know it ain't his grandma's. And I'm and I I can't track him in a car when he's taking back alleys and streets and cutting to people's yards and shit. Okay. You know what? With me and Robin, are too good to these motherfuckers. Good. I don't this care. One, I'm this one, this is the one that's sitting in jail, and the one that's carving my fucking daughter. Within two games of the day, all of y'all. And for you all to sit back, and do this to us, and it's wrong. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to say this, because I, I, I have been trying to let this slide, but if you want to holler about that, you haven't fucking goddamn Rick sat there and trying to take a picture of me while he's supposed to be taking a picture of a goddamn women playing a fucking uh, bullshit. Threatening me with motherfuckers having guns thrown in my house because you got some beef with Jack is an issue. You got Jack and Jeff? Yeah, right. Yeah, but well, I'm simply, you don't want to get him out. I have no problem with Jack. But, but six months ago, you did. Yeah, and me and him have already squashed it. We went to a back room, shut the door, and beat the fuck out of each other. And by the way, Rich wasn't taking anything from you, but she's not worried about you. Yeah. I don't give a shit. So, really, either way. So really, what you were doing, 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 you were no, they just said it won't be pretty. Okay, well, I know how it won't be pretty turns out. And if I have to get caught up in some bullshit, or I have to fucking answer my landlord because I just moved there, and there's all this stupid-ass drama. You, you mean the same kind of bullshit that Marlon is having to answer for you? Answer for me how? Because he's in jail right now because of the New York situation. It's the same kind of bullshit. You know what? That's the situation that was created by Terrence. Terrence started that shit with me and Eric and Marlo from the get-go because Marlo didn't pick sides. Okay, but it still involved you. Marlo should have been in that situation. Marlo never picked sides. Marlo should have been in that situation, period. No, he's not. Marlo should have been in that situation, period. But, I mean, why do you think you're running around trying to fucking find a way to come with a thousand dollars? I'll talk to everybody I know. Jack actually went up there to put his house up for a uh, fucking bond. Now then, it's most interesting to note that with Tammy Violet threatening me and Rachel uh, being uh, associated with uh, Nathan Lily trying to set me up for this little ambush, and then of course my ex uh, involved with DJ Lily, it's interesting to figure out how this whole thing came about being received. First of all, Tammy Violet uh, has a daughter by the name of Casey. Uh, her maiden name's Farmer, but her married name is Frank. She's married to John Frank. And Casey and John associate with Amanda. Um, when Tammy couldn't set me up, she put her daughter in a situation to try to set me up when that didn't work uh 
this was uh, about the same time that Amanda tried setting me up with DJ. When that didn't work, uh, uh, the, the little group of informants tried mixing and matching different people the, uh, uh, who, who thought they still had their hooks in me to try and lure me into different little ambushes and traps and setup and everything else. It's a very active, uh, uh, well, it's, you can see it's a very active form of entrapment using different people that they think that I don't realize happen to be snitches or informants or anything else, or that I don't realize are trying to set me up. And I played dumb and withheld that, you know, the fact that I knew they were trying to set me up as a way to get evidence on them to show that they were trying to set me up, uh, to, to to see how different people kind of allied against me when uh, they couldn't get their hooks in me to uh, set me up for uh, other cases of entrapment and you know again this is really interesting because uh, the situation with Amanda um, and then DJ and then uh, here Nathan magically seems to uh, uh, hook up somehow with uh, Rachel and to, to keep trying to, uh, to pull off these little ambushes and lure me out and everything else and the whole time I'm uh, just playing stupid and it seemed like I have dumb luck if they're missing me <coughs> and the fact of the matter is it's not dumb luck it's just you know me playing it pretty close to the chest but I'm still avoiding them uh, in in this case, I uh, I showed it in a chronological order, going from uh, the soonest to the latest happenings. Uh, so it originally started off as uh, Tammy using her daughter Rachel. Uh, this was immediately after uh, the whole thing with DJ and Amanda, and I mean you you can see how they keep trying to revolve around the same little group of people uh, uh, trying to fall back on the same uh, uh, on, on different little groups of people who all happen to have been snitches and informants that I was around the whole time you know getting this information uh, where they were trying to set me up and everything and this goes back to show how you know it's not just a matter of the police harassing me but the police harassing me using informants to do so uh, to try to set me up to try to entrap me uh, to try to use a pretext for something else as the uh, pretext for or, you know for, for for planning evidence or finding out what my next moves are or trying to find out what evidence I have on them so this has been like one big covert ops war game and uh, unbeknownst to them, you know, I, I'm actually intelligent. The reality of the matter is that every time uh, somebody on the street says, I don't snitch, it's usually because they're a snitch. Uh, everyone who says, you know, I, I don't snitch, I'd never snitch, blah, blah, blah. Well, the fact of the matter is almost everybody on the street snitches. Uh, that's how they get out of trouble. So I just kind of spun that around and flipped it with all these people who say they don't snitch but yet you have this constant situation of them uh, harassing me, trying to entrap me, uh, trying to use a pretext um, to, 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 to implant people in that situation. I mean, uh, Rachel went so far as to uh, say that she was pregnant by Jack and uh, knowing that... Uh, my cousin Jack has this whole that when he was staying with me, uh, that he has this whole issue because his father wasn't around because he was in prison. Um, that he has this thing about wanting to take care of his kids and everything and wanting to be a father to any child that you know he fathers. And uh, so she used this whole lie about you know uh, I'm pregnant or whatever to, to to get in with him. And then when it came out that she was wasn't pregnant that she lied about the whole thing and he broke it off with her uh, because of that lie she uh, uh, tried this whole little situation of trying to hook up with me and when that didn't work you know a whole series of other problems came about and you know I, her mother wouldn't take her back home as much as she hollered that she loved her and wanted her daughter there and everything else she wouldn't take her back home so I had to uh, keep her with me and the whole time she was there, she was trying to cause me problems, getting information for her mom, the feedback, the uh, 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 
Detective Allard, uh, who her mom says is her little buddy and everything, uh, with the Beckley Police Department, and, and you see this constant pattern of harassment. It's uh, informants going back to the, uh, the these same little groups of cops from these same little areas, and uh, the question needs to be asked exactly, you know, um, at what point does, uh, you know, using informants to catch people committing crimes become, you know, this need to use informants to set people up, the false of evidence against them for creating, uh, for committing crimes, you know, basically fabricating all the evidence against someone else. Um, I'm going, well, uh, that's all I'm going to show for this little third video. But the idea uh, where you can see where it's not just the police harassing you, falsifying evidence, there's certain other little groups of informants and everything else. Um, so you can see that obviously here, and I have a lot more information uh, that I'm debating on whether or not to put out in the future. Maybe I should start showing you know some of these little criminal undertakings which involve these police officers and putting this out on the internet. Let's just see where this goes.